A really interesting story today. I'm at AB Graphics International in Bridlington. They're a big user of Herco machine tools. I've come to meet with Stephen Lucas. They've recently bought two new machines, which we're going to look at in more detail. And we're going to talk to the guys about what they like about them and what, most importantly, they've delivered for the business. Steve, how long's this latest Herco machine been here? Uh, this one's been here about six months now, so it's up and running. And what is the model? Uh, it's a VMX 60 SWI. So the SWI, does that mean it's got an additional axis? Yeah, you've got the fourth axis on this one, so all the ones in the factory are just three axis. Well, this one has your fourth axis, so you get 90 degrees on the left, 90 degrees on the right. And when we talk about that fourth axis, that's actually in this head up here, isn't yeah. it? The whole head on this one swivels to the left or to the right, so that's your B axis. Because I know with this model you can get an integrated table as well to give you the fifth axis. Why, why didn't you go for that and, and you just stay with a four? Well, most of the jobs we do is just end holes or bearing housings, so we didn't need the fourth axis. But with this lang vice we've got here, you can turn your fourth axis into a fifth axis. By rotating, by rotating that round. rotating the vice all the way around. So this particular model here then, so we've got, we've got a tip in here which would call our B-axis yeah. essentially. What, what's it actually machining on this part, end hole? Uh, on this part, because it's a bearing housing, you've got the bars on each end, and by having the fourth axis, you can do the bars on the left, bars on the right, and you know they're in line with each other and parallel. Uh, where if you're on a three axis, you'd have to do one bar at one side, turn your block upside down, get it in line and then rebar it again. Which introduces a lot of potentially operator error. Yeah, yeah, you get a lot of operator error in there. Where with this one, because they've set it when it was installed, there should be zero error between each side. How fast is this machine, Steve? Uh, I'd say it's pretty fast, really. Give me an example of what you're machining or what, what speed you're running at. Uh, we've got a 16mm carbide cutter, uh, about full, full face, 10mm deep. You've got about 5,500 millimetres a minute. Uh, pretty quick, that's pretty quick. You must be machining a, or making a lot of swarf at that speed. What happens to that? Uh, all of our swarf goes down the back, down the flood cooling, inch conveyor at the bottom, and then straight out to left hand side into the bins. Okay, and we can't, we can't move on to the next machine without talking about this control, because yeah. this is obviously the latest control from Herco. Yeah. How do you find this? Uh, I think it's a lot more user friendly with this one, because you've got the bigger two sc twin screen on it, your keypad's more where your fingers are, really, so it's so stretching all the time. And then it just looks smarter, I'd say. There's a lot of features to it. We've done a couple of videos on it. I know it, I know it does enhance machining capability. Back onto the machine then. So how, how, how much of a benefit has this machine been to your business since you've had it in? Oh, that's a great benefit. From If we were to sub these out, for instance, we could probably save half the money minimum from us doing it. All right, and let's have a look, a, a look at another part. You've got the, this plate here. Now this plate here, usually, you'd machine it normally, stand it up on an angle plate, end all, spin it, end all. But with your fourth axis, machine it, tilt the head end all, tilt the head end all. So for that, you'd probably save five minutes on each one, end all in, and then you've got your setup as long as well. And again, the accuracy, the fact that yeah. you, can, you know you're going to get the holes in the right place. All machined at once, everything will be in line with each other. And what's this billet here? This billet, ah, oh, that's a very technical uh, filing stand, so don't <laughs> get a bad back. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to see you're not bending over. All right, we're going to move on to the next machine. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. So that's just one of a few new machines here installed by Herco at AB Graphics. I'm going over to another machine here, which is a DCX32i. I'm going to speak to Lucas. Lucas, tell me about this machine. Uh, this is DCX32e. Uh, I, excuse me. <laughs> it's a big machine. Yeah, 35 tons, 3 meters per 2 meters size of a table. Yeah, 35 ton is the weight of this and yes. 3 meters by 2 meters is the axis size. Exactly. So we're machining billets over here. What, what are you machining here? Uh, we're machining uh, frames for, uh, for our machines. Uh, so this is more plate work, isn't it, I can yes, see? Yes, is it. And what sort of material? Uh, this is aluminium. So what speed are you machining at? Uh, 8,000 RPM. And what about the feed rate? It's uh, 2,000 millimetres per minute. So pretty quick then. And, and what you're actually doing on here, drilling, tapping, milling? Yes, milling, uh, drilling, tapping, uh, doing some slots, uh, 
uh, counterbars, uh, pockets. So what actually drove you to a machine of this size? We couldn't find any subcontractor company uh, which, which could do uh, plates this size and have a machine this size. And you get into grips with the control all right? Yes, yes I am. Are you, are you programming offline or at the, at the control itself? Uh, myself as well. I'm uh, learning this machine because uh, we, have, we have this one since one year already. So. so how do you find the programming of this machine then, Lucas? It's very smart programming. I was using Fanuc before and Kurkov it's much, much, much more faster and smarter programming. Okay, brilliant. Thanks very much for your time, Lucas. So that's a great example today of two extremes of what Herco can supply. We've got a four-axis compact machining centre, which we looked at first with Steve, and then this DCX32i, so we've gone from billet work to plate work.